Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. God is good. And all the time, I thank God for this high honor to speak for him this afternoon. My time is limited, but it does not take God long to bless his people. And a person need not speak long to convey a mighty message under the control of the Spirit of God. Is there anyone with us now? You were in here this morning. May I see your hand? Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Is there anyone present now? You were in here this morning. You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? You were in here this morning. You're not an Adventist, but you're with us. All right. Let me extend a welcome to those connecting via the internet. Thank you very much for faithfully connecting with us. We know that the God, there's one God, one spirit, one faith, one baptism, one truth. And so the blessing God gives to us, we are sure, is the blessing he will give to you. Our subject this morning was what? The workman and his tools. Our subject this afternoon, tools in the workman's hands. What did I say? Tools in the workman's hands. Before I begin, please, if you have one of these, open it up. I prefer it than to that. But if this is all you have, make sure it does not ring, because I'm sure it will not be Jesus calling. Second fear, if I ask, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. That is based on Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, which says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And fear of number three, I want you to think as you listen. Isaiah 1, 18 Come now, let us what? Reason together, saith the Lord. And God asks us to reason because he is a reasonable God. There are some gods that are very unreasonable. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to hurt yourself, cut yourself, do that, prove that. All he says is, accept me. And I will prove myself to you. Are you listening to me? You don't have to prove anything to me, says God. I will prove myself to you because I came chasing you. Are you following me? If you chase a girl, she doesn't have to prove anything. You prove to her why she should stop and let you catch her. Are you following me? And so since God came chasing us, he says, I'll prove to you why it is to your advantage to stop and let me catch you. And so we serve a reasonable God. Think. As you listen, let's pray. Father in heaven, I come to you as your instrument, your tool, your agent. But of course, Father, I'm made of dirt. And so I need help from above. Let your divine power, literally your divine power flow through me. Not for my sake, Father, but for your glory. I want you glorified by the uplifting of simple, thus saith the Lord. If I've offended you, forgive me. Let me, Father, believe with the little faith I have that you will speak through me. And do for me what you did for Moses when you said to him, in Exodus 4, verse 12, Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Teach me, Father, I pray, and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ellen White makes a comment, very interesting. Signs of the Times... April 22, 1903, paragraph 5. 
Signs of the Times, April 22, 1903, paragraph 5. Humanity is the instrument through which God works for humanity. Let me say that again. Humanity. Who is humanity? Us. Humanity is the instrument, and we're talking about instruments and tools and agents today. Whether instrument, tool, or agent, humanity is the instrument through which God works for humanity. That's the way God has arranged it. Which means if we withdraw ourselves from God as instruments in his hand, people's salvation will be in jeopardy. You know, God has a, it's a very frightening thing that because of some of us, people will be lost. It's an encouraging thing that because of some of us, people will be saved. I never said we will save people. People will be saved. Are you following me? There are two statements Ella White makes. In one she says, I think it's the last day of Vince, 240, uh, 282 paragraph 3, she writes, There will be no, no one admitted to heaven with a starless crown. If you enter there, or if you enter, there will be some soul in the courts of glory. We are the instruments by which God draws other people to himself. To fail in that duty as an instrument is a crime against humanity. But let's look at it in a more uplifting way. To cooperate with God is to enjoy an honor of working personally with God for the salvation of souls. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's read verse 16. Our subject, tools in the workman's hands. Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4. We read verse 16. When you found that, say amen. amen. All right, somebody used to looking. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Do you have that now? Take heed unto thyself, and what else? And unto the doctrine. Conti read on with me. Continue, in, in other words, abide, be faithful, remain. Let nothing move you off the rock of truth. Continue in them. Keep reading. For in so doing, come on, thou shalt both save thyself, finish the verse, and them that hear thee. Now let's read that verse again microscopically. Take heed unto thyself. What does that mean? Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Keep an eye on yourself. There are many church members who believe it is a spiritual gift to look around to see what sins other people are committing. That's not a spiritual gift. Are you following me? If there's a theme you want to apply to your life, use this one. Mind your own business. Please mind your business. If you accidentally see something, okay. But don't look around hunting for sins because sin hunters become like the sins they hunt. Am I talking to myself? Sin hunters become like the sins they hunt. Are you with me? And so God tells Timothy, take heed unto thyself. Are you taking time for God's word? Are you taking time for the counsel, the precious counsel found in the writings of, I thank God every day almost for what he has done for this church through Ellen White. Amen. I never stop thanking God. Amen. And I don't care who thinks that it is scholarly to ignore Ellen White. For me, it may be scholarly, but it is stupid. Are you with me? Amen. Everything theological is not biblical. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? And so I thank God and I appeal to you in the name of Jesus, make time to read that woman's writings. Your mind will change. Young people, I appeal to you, particularly read her writings. 
And so the Bible says, take heed unto thyself. Are you studying God's word? Are you reading the counsel from his servant? Are you serving the church unselfishly? Are you trying to get sin out of your life? Are you making sure you're not a hindrance to someone else? Take heed unto thyself. Are you following the health message that God may more successfully communicate his truth to you? Take heed unto thyself. And unto the doctrine. Are you with me? So that's me. And that's the word. Continue in them. Now this is a tool, you see. Sometimes you have to do what to a tool for it to work well. Let's say a knife. What do you have to do? You've got to sharpen it. Now, this is a sharpening effect. Continue. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in so doing, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. My brothers and sisters, God wants to use you as a tool, not angels, not angels. Now, the Greek word angelos means messenger, yes, but God has not called upon angels to preach the word of truth. God has called upon us. We're the tools in the hand of the workman. Let's go back to Matthew Chapter 5, we were there this morning. Matthew 5, we'll read verse 13. Matthew 5, verse 13. Do you have that? Let me pray again. Father in heaven, my comments, uh, comments are brief, but still, Father... Be with me, I pray, please tell me what to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Ye are the salt of the earth. Think of what you just read. Ye are the salt of the earth. Where does earth get its salt? No, where does the earth get its salt based on that verse? Us. Outside of us, where does the earth get salt? Nowhere. In the light of this text. Ye, without you, the earth has no salt. Which means your responsibility and mine is heavy. And to neglect it is a crime. Verse 14. Read with me. Ye are the light of the world. Without you, the world has no light. Go to 1 John chapter 5. Let's see how John puts it. 1 John 5. Let's read verse 19. 1 John 5 verse 19. He says the same thing in a very different way. The disciple who was closest to Christ by his own choice, by the way. No one can stop you from choosing to be closest to Christ. Are you following me? At the last supper, John was leaning on the breast of Jesus so that Peter said, ask him who will betray him. Now, Peter could have asked himself, but when Peter saw how close John was to Jesus, he said, John, could you talk to Jesus for us? Are you with me? You talk to him for us. Get so close to Christ, my brothers and sisters, that people say, can you talk to God for me? First John 5, 19, read with me, what does it say? And we know, come on, that we are of God. Stop, that's one group. Finish the verse. And the whole world lieth in wickedness or darkness. Now, John splits the world into two groups. We and the rest of the world. Now, if the whole world lieth in wickedness and we are of God, the hope of the world is that we will do our duty as advertisers of the saving power of God. Are you with me? Because if we don't, the world is in trouble. Go to Ezekiel um, 5. Ezekiel 3. Let me show you what I... Well, Ezekiel will show you, not me. Ezekiel 3. We read from verse 18. 
You need to understand what a serious responsibility it is to be a tool in the hands of the workman and not cooperate with the workman. You have Ezekiel 3, verse 18. And you found it. If you have my version, you may read with me. When I say unto the, uh -huh, thou shalt, surely thou, read carefully now, and thou what? Givest him not warning, nor speakest come on to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life. The same wicked man shall what? Die in his iniquity. Finish the verse. But his blood will I require at thy hands. There are people in Silver Springs guilty of murder when Christ comes. Because some people will be lost because they did not allow God to use them the way he desired. They did not function in cooperation with the work. You see, many tools God have, they don't have to choose. The sun doesn't have to choose or the moon or the stars. Are you following me? We can say no. So the trickiest tool God uses is us. Because we can talk back. The clay does not talk back to the potter. Now we're supposed to be like that. But we talk back. We have better ideas. We're more creative in our thinking than God. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Read verse 19. What does it say? Yeah. Yet, if thou warn the what? Uh -huh. And he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. Come on. He shall die in his iniquity. Finish the verse. Ah, thou hast what? Delivered thy soul. Now you can say like Paul, let's listen to a man who has delivered his soul because he functioned as a tool in God's hands. Go to Acts 20. Our subject, tools in a workman's hands. Acts 20, we read from verse 25. This is Paul speaking to the elders of the church at Ephesus. He was at Miletus and he called them and they met with him at Miletus. He's talking to them. They will never see him again. Do you have Acts 20 from verse 25? Read with me. Come on. What does it say? And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Next verse, wherefore I take you to record this day, come on, that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now stop. Let's combine that with Ezekiel 3, verse 18. The same wicked man shall die as the iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Paul is saying, I am pure. From the blood of all men. What is Paul saying? I function to my fullest as a tool in the hands of God. And no one can accuse me as having their blood on my hands. Do you work where there are no Adventists? Do you attend school where students are not Adventists? Do you attend an Adventist school where students are not Adventists? but come to church on Saturday? Do you go to a gym where the members are not saved? Will any one of them be saved through you as a faithful tool in the hand of God? This is very serious, you know. While we're busy studying and working and pursuing a career and climbing the corporate ladder and keeping up with the Joneses and the Smiths and the Browns, there are people dying. God put us on this earth to be instruments of salvation to others. That's our primary responsibility. Listen to what Ellen White tells young men, which applies to all men and all women. Historical sketches, page 285, paragraph 4. Every youth should be impressed with the fact that he's not his own. That his strength, his time, his talents belong to God. She goes on to say, it should be his chief purpose in life to glorify God and to do good to his fellow man. She states two things. Glorify God, be a blessing to others. That is an effective tool in the hands of the workman. 
In the same paragraph, she goes on to say, every child, every youth has a work to do for the glory of God and for the salvation of souls that are about to perish. The commandments are divided into two groups. They're summarized into two summary statements. What are they? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy might or thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. And that's it. There isn't a commandment that says, thou shalt love thyself. Now, we live that way. But that's our commandment, not God's. Now, someone may say, wait a minute. Shouldn't I go to school? Of course you should. Should I pursue my graduate degree if that's God's will? Of course you should. But what's your motive? To be a more effective tool in the hands of God. So I pursue my master's in clinical counseling so I can more effectively guide people towards the, the source of help. That's really God. Should I pursue some advanced course in, in, I don't know, medical science? Yes, that I may be a more effective doctor. Why? For the blessing of others, and even before that, for the glory of God. And so the servant of God tells us humanity is the instrument God has chosen to work for humanity. We are the tools in the hand of the, of the workman, but we have a choice to work with him or to work against him. My appeal to you this afternoon, let us be tools that surrender ourselves entirely in the hands of God so that we may say to our maker, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, come on. I am the clay. And the clay has nothing to say other than thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for calling me and for using me and for granting me the power I need so I can be a tool that is sharp. Here's how the ultimate tool responded to the workman. Who's the ultimate tool? Jesus Christ as the agent of God on this earth. Go to John 8. John chapter 8. Our subject, tools in the workman's hands. Let's look at the ultimate tool, the ideal tool. Then we look at him in another light with a message from Ella White's book, Desire of Ages. Do you have John 8, 29? Listen to Jesus Christ. And he that hath sent me, come on, read with me, is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. Finish the verse. For I do always those things that please him. If the workman wants to put me in this direction or that direction, I go along. I comply. I agree. I offer no objections to God. Have thine own way. I do always, without exception, the things that please him. This is the tool God needs. A tool that does not answer back and kick against the pricks. A tool that does not object and does not try to compete with God. A tool that, like Christ says, I do always those things that please him. Let me show you how determined Christ was to be the ultimate tool. Listen to Ellen White. The Desire of Ages, page 72, paragraph 4. What did I say? Listen carefully. Now, this is an example for us. He was unwilling to be defective even in the handling of tools. Are you with me? He was perfect as a workman, as he was perfect in character. Christ was a workman himself. He used tools. He was his father's tool, his father's agent. Okay, but he used tools as a workman. Ellen White says, Christ deliberately made sure that his work was as perfect as a carpenter as it was perfect in the preservation of his soul from sin. Now you tell me, if you and I took that approach to our work at the office, if all Adventists worked like that, every company would want to hire only seven of the Adventists. If students took that approach to studying calculus and physics 
And statistics, that those subjects that give them gray hairs before their time, they would have no problem. Listen again. It's almost difficult to, to, to accept what that statement says. He was unwilling to be defective. Are you willing to be the very best Bible worker you can be? Are you willing to be the most effective culporter, literature evangelist you can be? Are you willing to be the most effective results-based medical missionary? He was unwilling to be defective. Even in the handling of tools. If Christ were a manicurist, you'd leave his salon with the nicest fingers in the world. He was perfect as a workman, as he was perfect in character. That's the tool God can work with to maximum effect. But there are many tools in the church who are sloppy, lazy, have no concept of excellence. They do not realize that hard work is a Christian virtue. They do not understand that being on time is absolutely a Christian virtue. And so they get to work late and leave early. My brothers and sisters, let's, like Christ, be unwilling to be defective as tools in the hand of the workman. Because the sharper the tool, the more effectively God can work with it. Are you following me? Because God can only work with what we give him. But he's willing to improve us and improve us and improve us. And so I have to conclude my remarks, tools in the workman's hands. Let us ask God to give us a fitness to so serve him that when he comes, you know, the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. But in a certain sense, we too must see the travail of our souls. Those to whom we gave Bible studies and got baptized. Those for whom we prayed and got baptized. Those to whom we gave a lift and accepted the truth. We must look forward to see the travail of our souls, our efforts. And like Christ, at a lower level, of course, be satisfied. We serve a God, as we said this morning, who uses what? Tools. Give me the other word. Instruments, what's the next word? And agents. You and I are all three. We are tools, agents, instruments. Very often young men come to me, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a preacher. So, well, don't wait until you go to theology school. Are you studying the Bible now? Your number one duty as a preacher is not to run the church board, but to break the word of life to people. That's your number one responsibility. Now, do you know it? What kind of tool do you want to be in a pulpit? The Bible says, the lips of Christ, Luke 16, 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And so God looks at you and he looks at me. How much is she doing with what she has? How much is he doing with what he has? Is he or she giving me justification to broaden the base of his service or influence. Are you following me? Some people want to go to Russia and the uh, Philippines and um, out to Mongolia and have done nothing next door. Mm -mm. God won't take mediocrity from next door and send it to Mongolia. God's not doing that. We must be tools, hardworking tools, willing tools, Effective tools in the hand of the creator or the workman. And remember the words again I began with. Signs of the Times, April 22, 1903, paragraph 2. Humanity is the instrument through which God works for humanity. Here's a reference again. Signs of the Times, April 22, 1903, paragraph 2. Now it's in paragraph 5 she says, we were created because we were needed. Let me ask you now, how many of you will say, Father, use me to be the reason why many are saved when you come, mess your right hand. And that person may be the one who lies next to you at night, your spouse. 
maybe your child that you spent thousands of dollars on in college. Stand with me. Use me. Stand with me. To be the reason many are saved when you come. Could be that six-year-old child you have who can easily learn the truth as easily as children learn evil, they can learn what's right. If you're a parental tool in the hand of God. Father in heaven, we will never fully grasp the tremendous honor of being used by you. You can find other ways, Father, you've chosen this way. Use humanity to reach humanity. And you demonstrated your commitment to this principle by sending someone equal with yourself as a human being. In that sense, you use humanity to reach humanity. Dear God, change the way we think, Father. Let us value service with you. Not high positions in corporations and companies, and governments. They have their place. But to work with you, Father, intimately, personally, for the greatest work ever given to human beings, let us value that, Father. Let's make any sacrifice to do it well. And so, God, we offer ourselves to you now as tools in the workman's hands. Let us, like Christ, let us say, we are not willing to be defective even in the use of tools, the skills you've given us. Let us be perfect as workmen as we strive to be in character. Enable us to this, Father, that ultimately glory may come to your name through those who've come to you through our labor. And let our labor for others, Father, increase our spiritual power. Draw us closer to you. Hear this humble prayer, God. Save every single person under my voice in this building via the internet, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen.